Hi everyone and welcome back to Queen G's Recipes and today I'm going to be demonstrating on how to make homemade cake pops. So we're going to be making a birthday cake style cake pop similar to the ones you would purchase at Starbucks. So the ingredients you'll be needing are very few and um, what I have here is one whole French vanilla cake. So I just bought one of my um, moist boxed cakes that I preferred, that I really like. And what I did was I baked it yesterday, I allowed it to cool at room temperature completely, then I placed it in my fridge, wrapped with some plastic wrap, and today I crumbled it up. As you can see, it is crumbled up into nice crumbs. Okay, now what you're also going to be needing here is some candy melts. In my candy melt pot here, I have two bags of candy melts. Each bag contains 340 grams. So I placed one package of pink candy melts and one package of white candy melts. So you need to be using candy melts for this recipe, which you can find even at Walmart, Michaels, any craft store, any baking store um, will have these kinds of ingredients. You're also going to be needing some frosting. What I have here is some cream cheese frosting. You can use any frosting of your choice. And I'm also going to be using some sprinkles, which is totally optional. And I have some um, color dust here just to add some shine to our cake pops. Now you're also going to be needing a baking sheet here lined with some parchment paper. And you will need some treat sticks like this to make your cake pops. And I just have a styrofoam round um, a uh, piece of styrofoam here that I will be using to place my cake pops on once we have dipped them. So now I have my candy melts completely melted here. Into my candy melts I added two measured tablespoons of lard like Crisco for example. If you don't have any lard on hand you can also use uh, vegetable oil. Any flavorless oil you can add. Add the same amount so about two tablespoons and as you can see it is nice and um, smooth and liquidy because you can't work with a thick chocolate because it'll be very hard to coat them. Okay, so ours is perfect here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about half a cup of my frosting into my cake and then we'll add by tablespoonfuls until we have the consistency that we need to make our cake pop balls and I'll let you know how much it takes to get to that consistency. Okay, so before moving on to that step, I want to let you know that I continuously have my um, melting pot here on high temperature so that our chocolate doesn't start to firm up. And uh, you can do this on a double boiler, that is totally fine as well. Just make sure you melt the chocolate and the um, vegetable oil or Crisco, whatever you're using, make sure you do that when you need it so it's not sitting there if you don't have one of these uh, melting pots. Okay, so now let's add in about half a cup of our frosting. Okay. Now you can use your hands for this, a spatula, whatever you find easier. If you have nice clean hands, that's the best way to make them. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to switch to uh, mixing this with my hands because it's much, much easier. And then we'll add in more frosting if needed. Okay, so now I'm going to add in about another tablespoon. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit more, so about a tablespoon and a half here and mix again.
Okay, so we placed about into one cake from a cake box. We used about a half a cup of frosting plus an extra two tablespoons. So you will see when you're making your cake pop mixture that as soon as you can form a cake pop ball, you know that it is okay. You don't have to add any more because if you add too much frosting, it'll become too soft. The cake pop won't hold together and it'll be a disaster. So once you start rolling a piece and you notice that it is making a perfect cake pop ball and it's not breaking apart then you know you are ready to go if you notice it is breaking apart then keep adding by tablespoonfuls don't add too much because then you can't go back from that okay so what I'm gonna use now is my small ice cream scoop here you can use just a tablespoon now remember you don't want to make them too big because if you do they won't hold on the sticks and um, they will be too big. So now I'm just gonna roll it here, just roughly the size of a ping pong ball, okay? And I'm gonna place them on my tray. I'm gonna keep on going until I'm done here. And then we're gonna place these into the fridge for about 20 minutes. Okay, so I noticed that my candy melts were thickening up a little bit even though they were continuously on with the heat on. So what I did was I add an extra measured tablespoon of lard in here because we do need it to be nice and soft. Not extremely liquidy, but um, enough to be able to drip off of our cake pop. So give it a stir before you start using it. Make sure you place it in a glass tall enough for you to um, stick your cake pop inside. So what I like to do is just with the tip of the cake pop stick, just a little bit like that. Okay, we are going to stick it into our cake pop, not going all the way in, just about half to three quarters the way. Okay, I'm gonna set them aside here. So continue doing the same thing. Right. I'm going to continue doing this and um, then we'll be ready to dip our cake pops. Okay, so after placing a treat stick in each one of my cake pop balls, I put placed it into the fridge for five minutes to allow it to set. And now we're ready to dip our um, cake pops. So make sure that you give your chocolate another nice stir here. and make sure your glass is wide enough to be able to dip your cake pop and just allow the excess to fall off and now I'll just place some sprinkles on top here one here. Okay, so when dipping your cake pop, if you notice that there's still some excess chocolate dripping off, um, you can just tap your hand like this to allow the excess to drop off because I'm noticing here before I topped mine with the sprinkles that there was still a little bit of excess chocolate. So just tap your hand, don't tap the stick, don't tap the cake pop at all, or else it's at risk of um, falling off of the treat stick. Okay, we're good now, so I'm gonna take some sprinkles, just sprinkle it on the top here. Okay, and there we go, we can allow it to dry. If some chocolate um, falls off onto the stick, you can wipe that off after, it's not a major concern. So I'm going to do one more to show you. Okay.
Okay, so we have completed our cake pops. As you can see, we have a variety of decorated cake pops here. All kinds of sprinkles, plain ones. These are perfect for birthdays, showers, any occasion. They are so wonderful. They take a little bit of time, but most definitely worth all the work and effort. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I also wanted to give you guys one more tip before we end the video. I just want you to make sure when making, when melting your chocolate, make sure that you don't overdo it with the shortening. Make sure that you only put up to the amount that I used, or else you will have have shortening coming out of your chocolate it will be oozing out as soon as they start to cool off so you don't want to overdo it on that once you see that it's a consistency that you can dip and it'll drip off nicely then you are good to go and so that's about it guys but before we end the video let's try one and show you up close here Okay, so you can serve your cake pops right away and they can actually be left at room temperature for a few hours. Now, the remaining cake pops that you do not consume, just make sure you keep them in the fridge and you can just eat them, you know, anytime you like. They taste not exactly like, but better than the ones you buy at Starbucks, which are extremely expensive. And most definitely, if you make them at home, this recipe gave me 37 cake pops with one box of cake mix and half a container of frosting topping. It is very inexpensive to make an abundance of cake pops. You can also double the recipe, triple the recipe. You can do whatever you like with it. So that's about it. And um, I, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a nice big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you will be notified every time I upload a new and delicious recipe. So share the recipe with your family and friends and I really hope you guys give this a try. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the recipe. And that's about it. So I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye everyone.